Happy fabulous Wednesday, Furniture Dorms. Sunday, yes. We don't know what day it is. It's Wednesday. I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday. 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 I was going to say Furniture Dorms. I don't know. That's Teresa's line. Hello. Teresa's slinking back over here. Do you want to come on and say hi to people? Okay. You can do this today if you want. So oh, Teresa's oh. here. Hi. Hi. Hello, Furniture Dorks. There we go. That's what I was going for. <laughs> That's what I was trying to go for. Teresa is not live today. I will explain that soon. Yes. yes. But not today. Not today. So y'all have a great one. Peace out. Bye. So, Bye. Look cute in that chair. Not really. So, Thank you. So today is typically um, where we do furniture or we do uh, thrift store makeovers. Yes. And we do have some thrift store pieces here. We did not go thrifting this week. Nope, nope. Um, we are trying to clean out the back room. We've got a lot of stuff in that back room. Believe me, we got yeah, a lot so of stuff. Yes, so we're trying to clean that out. Um, bunch of stuff going on for the new year. You'll hear a lot of commotion in the background, and uh, that is what it is. But today, I'm gonna be working on, so we had this sign. It says, Rise and Shine. I remember that one. Um, so we actually used to sell these. All yeah, right. Um, and we had one left over, I remember that one. one little lonely one left over that has not sold in like a year. Hi, Cassie. Um, so rather than mark it down, I mean, it was already marked down, but rather than get rid of it or whatever, I'm just going to make it over. Are you? I am. So to be sure I could do this today, I already yanked that chicken right off. Oh. So I just literally use my fingers, fingers whatever. Um, I just use my fingers. Yeah, She's going to talk over me today, apparently. Um, actually, you know what? You want to go grab some Dixie Belle mud in the back for me? Mud. 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 Um, so I just used my fingers and pried him off. You probably could have used a um, like a screwdriver, like a flathead screwdriver or something, and stuck him under there and yanked him off. Um, this is very similar. You could do this with a lot of thrift store projects. But I am going to... Um, actually, I'm going to turn the sign, rather than it being this way, I'm going to turn it this way. So I'm also going to have to take off this um, sawtooth hanger and move it to the top, but I won't worry about that right now. I'm going to be using JRB stencil. This is lavender. <laughs> I can't, um, so it's called big lavender plant stencil. I cannot tell you how much I am ready to be done with holiday stuff at this point. Because you know when you retail, you started holiday, like back in August, September, and here we are two weeks before Christmas, and I am I'm ready to be done with Christmas. I am ready for spring. So I am gonna be working on that. Sue has this lovely urn over here when she comes back in a minute, and she is gonna be painting this. We're gonna be using Dixie Bell for everything. Dixie um, Bell you know, we didn't today. have any paper issues either. Oh. You were sitting here looking at your phone. Oh, I was playing around. With she was things. literally playing. What game were you playing? I wasn't playing a game. Uh-huh. I was looking on Facebook. Oh, she was looking on Facebook. So um, she's going to be painting this with Hurricane Gray. She's going to go grab some Klingons out of the water. And I'm going to get started on patching these holes with my Dixie Mud. I'm going to throw my glasses on because I don't see very well without them. And uh, let's see who we've got on today. Let's see. Hey, Cassie. Okay. So anyway, um, this works a lot like Spackle. So I'm going to use my sandpaper first and just sort of flatten some of these holes out a little bit Oops, where they were in. Right, we're flipping things upside down today. That's a good plan. See, I can learn. You can learn. That's good. Let me just back up this. There's like a little... All right, you saw that this thing here? You are. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. I can do this. I have like a little nail sticking out in the back or in the front, so I'm literally using the back of my the you handle. Get some pliers? Um, because that wood's thin enough to trim and go right through with that little tiny brush. Yeah, maybe so. I've got I've got it mostly through. Um, so while she's getting some pliers, I'm gonna get to spackling this. Literally, I was gone. Like I wasn't even in the building. I got here about 15 minutes ago, and I hadn't planned out today yet. So in the last 15 minutes, we've been trying to. Uh, figure out what I was doing today. 
There's just a lot going on right now. Uh, all good stuff that we will tell you about, not today, but soon. Possibly as early as next week. But all good stuff, but it did have me out of the building today. So right. Sue's messaging me like quarter till going, uh, are you coming are in? Are you coming in? Because, you know, it's, be bad this time. it's like quarter till and... I don't, I'm, I'm not about to do this by myself because I got no clue. <laughs> I told them I was going to show people how to how to wrap glass today if that was going to be the case. Y'all need to learn how to wrap glass, wrap and pack glass. <laughs> got to get all the glassware over to the stagers. Yeah, it's it's been a little interesting. So I'm also going to tape this off, which you know... And I'm gonna save this rooster because he's cute. You just never know when you might need a galvanized rooster. I always need one. Hey, Cindy. Um, got some customs being picked up today or tomorrow. Excited about that. Gosh, they've been back there forever, mostly because I take forever to work on things. Which reminds me, what are we doing about them chairs? Yeah, yeah, I gotta work on those. This. Weekend, so I did my part. You did your part. Oh, I gotta finish my part. My part's always so much more than your part. I don't know. You ever noticed to, that? I had to redo the chair covers and I had to do the base painting. Well, I don't think they're all I base painted. The, what? I don't think they're all base painted. They are. Because I was looking at one the other day and I could still see white under it. Didn't I base paint with white? No, you base paint it with gray. Oh, that's right. I think I need to do second coats on the white ones. Because we had four of them that were already that color gray, mm -hmm. and then two that were white. Mm -hmm. And the gray didn't do such a hot job on the white. Well, I mean, it usually takes two coats. But I think that white is a, a, a latex paint. Oh, that's always a pain. And that's just a pain in the butt. People, please don't paint your furniture in latex. Please, please don't. Please don't. It's so much prep work for us. When you do that. so much more. Work. Can you hear the big floor move downstairs? <laughs> this poor floor has been moved and moved. Moved and moved. <laughs> moved and moved and moved. Oh my gosh. So it's hump day. How's everybody's hey. week going? I know I see the camel in my back in the background. That that <laughs> progressive commercial? No, it's Geico. Or Geico, whatever. Huh? Come on now, let's I, get it right. I know, you used to work for Geico. I did. I used to work for Geico many, many moons ago before they became a fun company that has a gecko. What were they then? Uh, they were just your military and government workers mm. company. They were open to everybody. It's just, as soon as Warren Buffett bought in, mm -hmm. they decided to go fun. I don't know what it is about Warren Buffett, but as soon as he made that company fun, I fell in love with Warren Buffett. Not a fun company before? No. No? No. <laughs> that's much. No. It's insurance. <laughs> How fun yeah, can insurance be? I mean, that's probably... Uh, actually, no. Insurance can be very fun. Apparently, because it's got a gecko now. Insurance, uh, we, we did uh, a lot of work with uh, Safe Light Auto Glass. Okay. And Safe Light Autoglass, probably on a regular monthly basis, would host a, a uh, happy hour. And so the claims department would always have these happy hours. And as soon as I had friends in the claims department, happy hours. Happy hours. And boy, they paid for everything. They had food out. They, oh, my God. They were very generous. So there are perks. There are perks. Well, I mean, I guess Safe Light wants to... Keep the claim department paying those. Yeah. Between them and like Enterprise Rent a Car, they're we're always doing kind things for the workers. Bless you. Bless you. Oh my you. gosh. Oh, sneaker sneaks. This season, I don't know. I do not usually suffer from allergies. But this year, I don't know what's in here. I feel like as I've gotten older, I've also become much more susceptible to allergies. I think that happens with people. Maybe the system gets overloaded or something. I don't know. 
So my um, Dixie mud is already dried. I'm just sanding it down. That was quick. I know, it's really fast. Um, I love that. So I'm just sanding down the, the board nice and smooth. I have a bunch of colors out because when I do this stencil, I'm gonna do multicolors. I'm gonna make it nice and spring shiny happy. Oh, pretty. Can you explain how to take care of a brush? Um, I brought a really nice one from us from painting a rocking chair and you don't wanna ruin it. Absolutely, I will. Um, and hi, Brianna. It's nice that you caught us live. Very awesome. Okay, Cindy, did you buy a Klingon? Sue's going to get a um, visual demonstration for you. Okay, uh, which way do I wanna do this? I am going to, I'm gonna do burlap down. I was kind of debating which way, how I wanted to paint this out. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, if you do a lot of painting, you need to get one of these. It's a paintbrush cleaner. And you don't want to poke yourself with it because these little boogers are, are so painful. Sharp. But they'll get up into your bristles all the way up to the ferrule. And you could scrape all that paint off of the bristles. And also, well, we've got fusion, but you get a paintbrush cleaner. So it's just like a soap that uh, cleans, helps break down the paint. And I will say the fusion cleaner is some of the best paintbrush cleaner. I love it on the market um, it does it just takes a little dab so we leave it by the sink with a little stick in there and you put a little mm -hmm. dab on there and this little thing we've had it for years we just use that but i will tell you that this is the best thing because it gets right up right up to there you could scrape it out especially if you do a lot of painting like you're on a paint streak and you just got a lot in there or it if you've been, up in there. or if you did one of those things where you put your brush down <laughs> and you're kind of come right back to it, and four hours later, four hours later, um, that was my that was my SpongeBob. It's a SpongeBob, yep. Four hours later, you have realized it was a fat round one with a long handle. So that yep. Well, this will work. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Is it black? Are the bristles um, synthetic or are they natural? So are they That's a good question. are they um, plasticky or are they like uh, hair like? Are they that, that nylon bristles? Yeah. Or are they the nice little furry bristles? So, because we do sell stall masters and some other ones that are really nice brushes as well. Yeah, but the care, yeah. but the care for both of the the care for a stall master or the care for a Klingon are very different um, because of the way they're made. So, and how they're made right. to be clean. So I wanna be sure I give you the proper techniques. But I'm um, very picky about brushes. So I will clean the dickens out of these Klingons even though that they pretty much clean themselves. I will make sure that every last little dried bit of paint is scraped out of there. So, but these are good regardless of what kind you have. Um, just because if you, especially if you're painting a lot, and I know you kind of mass produce, so you probably are painting a lot, that you'll really get some dried paint up in there. And that's the only thing that I have found that really cleans up in the ferrule area, which you need to have cleaned really nicely. Um, the ferrule area is where the bristles. Right up in there. Yeah, and you should never, you should never really have your brush more than about halfway full of paint. It shouldn't, if it goes above the halfway mark, you've overloaded your brush and you are more likely to damage your brush. Yeah, because basically with the Klingon, when you've already rinsed everything out of it, if you've got paint that's packed up in that barrel, when you hang it upside down in the, in the water like that, the, the wet bristles, the water comes up the bristles and just pulls the paint down out of that barrel. So it just slowly keeps all that out. And then usually what I'll do is after I pull them out of the water to use them, I tend to rinse them off real quick just because yeah, anything too. that comes out of there could still be in the bristles. So then you can just give it a quick rinse and you're ready to paint. Well, and sometimes if you don't change the water often enough, which is true here, then I you're... try and get to it once a week. Then your water can be gray or blue or whatever. And if it's been cleaning, the it's been cleaning, but it's been cleaning with... Um, Dirty paint water, right? 
Yeah. So I'm using, um, so everything we're using today is Dixie Belle and I am using drop cloth right now. Oh, I like this lucky lavender. Yeah, that's because I'm going to do lavender flowers. I thought the lavender would be real pretty oh, for lavender. So this has got really nice uh, two coat coverage. I did because I'm, because I am trying to make this super, um, super nice. I went ahead and sanded between coats. Ideally, that is what you should do when you are when you are painting. Really, it um, you should use a high grit sandpaper, high number grit. Two twenty, three twenty. Two twenty, three twenty. Um, you can even use a paper bag, to be honest. That's um, true. You can. Or or packing paper to sand in between coats, but it will give you a nicer finish product. Um, a really super super slick. You know, I keep course um so i don't know what i'm doing with this thing other than painting it i mean you're i mean that's really all you're doing but you're gonna have to you're gonna paint the inside of it too oh. so i was gonna get you a second project but i figured once you painted the inside also well so i only had 15 minutes to figure out what i was doing let alone what you were doing I just never know. I just come in, sit down, do as I'm told. So, Set up the lights and go. I was in McClenny longer than I anticipated being today. McClenny will suck you in, man. Man, it will. Especially Stephanie's store. So beautiful, but there Stephanie's was store. apparently an accident yesterday. What? Um, you know the lady who owns the store next to her? Yes. Well, part of her store. Yeah. Right? That, that little bit in the back. Yeah. And she also owns the building across the street. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, apparently, yesterday she was walking across the street and got hit by a car. Oh no! So she's in the hospital. I was just in the clinic passing the store yesterday. Uh, it happened yesterday afternoon. Uh, she was she was walking across the street and she got hit by a car. Um, she is in intensive care. Oh dear. And uh, Stephanie was helping watch her store today because you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's the holidays. Everybody's always worried about their store on the holidays. Because, you know, that's... McClendy's a cute little small town here in Florida. Tiny, tiny little town. Like, it's a tiny little town. Like very two, friendly people. Like, very good. Like two streets of commercial. That's about it. And, um... Wow. Anyway, so... I was listening to that story. And it was very sad. That's very sad. I hope she's going to be all right. So, anyway. Stephanie will take care of everything. Stephanie will take she's care of everything. Um, supposedly, she's doing really well. Um, but Stephanie's minding her store. I shared it on my Facebook wall today. I didn't share it on the store's Facebook wall. If you go to the Weathered Wheel's Facebook page, um, there's an article there about it. Um, you know, we all try to do our best to support each other. Yeah, she's just a fellow shop owner. She's, uh, hers is a, a little antique store that's attached to the Weathered Wheel, um, out in McClaney. Yep. Um, I think I, I we probably met her once, but I, I, I don't know her. No, I don't wow. know her personally. Um, I mean, we've met her a couple times, but. It's just sad. I don't, I, I mean, gosh, somebody must have been hauling some butt through that, that intersection. From what I heard, the guy was at the light, and um, when the crosswalk turned on, he was he was paying attention to another vehicle, and wasn't paying attention. And didn't see her in the crosswalk. You know, people do still walk in this world. The sad thing is, he had just he is, and he might have been distracted because. Apparently, he is um, just recovering from the one-year accident of the loss of his daughter in an ATV accident. Oh, dear. So, it was the anniversary of her death. So, that would be a distraction. So, our little minds get to thinking. So, just, just a horrible situation all around. It's a holiday season, people. Reach out and love somebody, would you? Yeah, absolutely, Brianna. Um, 
biggest fear as a creator is getting hurt and not being able to work. I mean, yeah. it it is a thing where when it's just us, you know, that are providing our income, that it can be tough. So what I'm doing here now is I'm going to use this, and it's a little tall. It's a little bit tall for my piece, so it sticks out. And I do want this to be nice and crisp. So I'm gonna, and I'm also doing multiple colors on this. So I'm gonna move it around a little bit to kind of make it work for me. So I am gonna tape off some of this uh, just to make it work better for me. And uh, yeah, it was really sad hearing about that. And you know, as creators, we also try to support each other as much as possible because we know that, you know, it, it's a very small community. And, and it's important, I think, that as much as we can, that we take care of each other. Yep. So Definitely. when you're stenciling, it is one of the most important things when you're stenciling is to make sure that your brush is super dry. Um, so, so don't let Sue do it. So don't let Sue do it. <laughs> uh, Sue likes to overload the brush a little bit. I like paint. So you put very little paint on your brush and um, like I'm gonna have this to, to um, offload most of the excess so that it's almost all of it off of here. And then the other thing is when you change color, you should either have a different brush or you're gonna have to use a dry brush that you already had paint on and just try to offload most of that paint. So there's a couple different philosophies. You could be a pouncer um, or you can be a swirler. I'm a swirler. I find that it's easier and that you end up with less bleed if you have properly offloaded. And if you start on the plastic part or I'm on the tape here, don't just go straight into the stencil like start your swirling on the plastic and move to the stencil area, the open area, because what happens is then you actually um, are getting any of that super wetness in the plastic area, not the opening. You're able to kind of do a second offload base effectively. And I also like the swirling because I feel like you get a more, um, I almost want to say granulated look where you the color is less intense it's more faded okay so now I'm moving it because I want this top to fit on here but it's a little it's a little tall for my piece I'm just moving it down now so it fits because I've got the word lavender there in the middle and I'm going to use that word lavender. I'm just going to make it work a slightly differently than it was meant to. And so I am positioning now the stencil a little lower and my lavender will kind of hover over You're it. getting all crazy with it. Um, I just want to show people how, it, if, and if it doesn't always fit, you can, you can still really have a cool piece and make it work. So again, I'm going to swirl. And I'll show you what I mean when I say kind of graduated in color. But basically, so you can shade and stuff like that, which I will be doing on this for sure. And now where I've got this really thin line, I'm actually kind of just going back and forth so that it doesn't have the opportunity to push out of the way. And sometimes that's what you have to do to... This color gray is very different on the table than it is on here. That's fine. Looks more brown on here and looks more gray up here. Paint, what you gonna do? So, I, Stephanie, I don't think I... Or, Cindy, I'm sorry. Um, I don't think I ever finished telling you about how to properly care for your brush. So, let me kind of go back to that. So if you have a natural bristle brush, which like this is a natural bristle brush, you need to make sure that you always get all of the paint out of it and it needs to sit dry. Ideally, your paint brushes should be stored tipped down like this. If you can hang them. If you can hang them. Like sometimes they have hooks and you can hang them on pegboards and things like that. 
most of us don't, most of them store it like this. So when you're drying them, it's important that you lay them out on a paper towel or something that is absorbent or dry them hanging upside down. And it's always important that you reshape the tip. So like if you have a French tip, you need to make sure that you're always, after when it's drying, that you're always pulling them back into a point and that none of the bristles are split. No, that's a good thing to know. And you always want to make sure that you use some kind of good brush soap. And if you're using it regularly and it seems to be splaying, you can actually use hair conditioner because it's natural bristles. Um, and that can help pull some of it back. But then you would want to wash it again before you use it, right? Because you got to get that get conditioner out. out, right? So you can do that as well. Um, so that's always an option. And um, your brush, if you are using a natural bristle brush, they should never be stored in water. Yeah. Don't look at my sink at home. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, the way she treats her brushes, it's, it's obscene. It is obscene. It is completely obscene. Um, but it is the truth. Well, now that you lie. got the dish rack at your house there, I've been, I've been hanging them up. As I find your, yeah. your brushes around the house, I've been hanging them up on the back of that dish rack. That's probably a good idea. So the other part is... Um, if you're using the Klingon, which is what we sell here also, which is what we use, we usually paint with, these are synthetic brushes, bristles, and they are meant to be stored in water, <laughs> which is my favorite thing about them. That is your favorite thing about them. They are meant to be stored in water. Melissa will like to paint, paint, paint for hours on end and then put all of her little brushes in a cup full of water and there they are. And there they are until I paint again. Until they run out of water because they evaporate. That happens sometimes too. Mm -hmm. So. And I would like to tell you that it's because they're Klingons and they're meant to be in water. That's except not for, except for most of my brushes at home are actually stall masters, which are only thirty to forty dollars a piece. And then not to mention, most paint brushes your ferrule will rust, rust and then that's not good for your brush. No, mm -mm. certainly isn't good for your painting. No. Mm -mm. So we have the word lavender here, and and it's neatly on the stencil spaced between these. But what I actually did, because I moved mine and made it a little bit shorter, is I went ahead and I stenciled it in white first. And I just, it's kind of overlapping the top and the bottom of this. Um, if you can see that. I wasn't looking. <laughs> um, Rihanna, I will tell you that nothing makes painting more enjoyable than a good brush. Like people who don't like painting, I mean, of course not everybody's gonna love painting. But people who really hate painting and talk about how difficult it is, I can almost guarantee you it's because they're using a poor quality brush. Okay, so let me let me let me go ahead and equate it like this. Let's say you've got sheets on your bed, and everybody loves getting into bed when your sheets are all fresh and clean. Now, imagine getting into your bed when you've got like a 1,200 thread count on your bed, and it's soft as a baby's butt. It's that much better. It really is that much better. What'd you it, say? it really is. I mean, you don't know what you're missing until you until you find out what you're missing. Um, yeah, that's true. I know my husband got really mad the first time I bought really good sheets. He's like, you spent how much money on sheets? I was like, get in that bed and try them out. I was like, you don't understand. He's like. That is ridiculous, Melissa. Nobody spends that kind of money on sheets. And recently I had to buy new sheets. And he's like, you are buying the Egyptian cotton ones, right? <laughs> he's like, you are, you are buying the good sheets, right? Of course I'm buying the good sheets. Um, but he really needed to know. Once, you, once you've tried it, it's like good chocolate too, man. You don't know that Hershey sucks until you've had something really good. I mean, that's probably true. 
I do still like crappy chocolate though. Some crappy chocolate is just good. Like Easter chocolate. Yeah, like I expect I expect to have the waxy footballs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're expecting, you're used to it. It's probably more of a happy childhood memory than anything. Yeah, I mean, but, who wants the waxy footballs? But like I expect the waxy footballs for Easter. See, my mother made the mistake of giving me Godiva as a child. And once I've learned that there is good chocolate out there compared to my Hershey's chocolate, I, I can't go back. Okay. So now I'm gonna use the same, you notice I'm using the lids mostly because you need such little paint on this. Um, and so I'm gonna use my, I have a slightly smaller, so we sell a three pack of stencil brushes and it's like big, medium and small. Um, they each get a little bit smaller and they're only, I think they're only like $7.99 or $9.99 for all three of them. So they're a great deal. And I prefer, um, I prefer the smaller brushes over the giant brushes. I feel like you have more control. And since I like to blend versus doing it all in a single color, like I know uh, Zeb and Jamie Ray usually do theirs like in one solid color. I like to gradient mine. So it makes a difference to use a smaller brush. Um, let's see. Brianna says, Cindy says she thinks hers is a natural Zipper. bristle. I think you're right. I feel like you got one of the stall masters. Um, has, Brianna has a zebra and a paint pixie, but they're your old now and you're getting lazy with them. Yes, that happens. <laughs> that, that, that will happen. Um, yes, we sell them. If you go to ravehomecollection.com and um, you should see a DIY tab and they are um, one of the drop down options on the DIY tab. They're fabulous. I haven't tried the zebras, but I am fascinated by by how useful their designs are. And I, I, I would really, really like to get a set. And I know Fusion just started um, selling them, so we probably will start carrying them. Um, I just haven't done that yet. Um, we haven't put in a fusion order since I found out. Like we had literally just placed the order like three days before we found out. So I haven't ordered since then. We'll, we'll see on the next order. I love the fact that they designed them for all the nooks and crannies. I've heard their triangle brush is really good. Yeah. I don't know anything about it other than that's what I've heard. So I'm going in now and just doing the, the leaves. Let me see, I'm just doing the leaves um, at the bottom. And I'm, again, I'm using the same brush that I did my white. Oh no, I didn't, I actually grabbed a second brush. I didn't think I did. I meant to grab the white, so. she says. Am I doing any kind of a distressing on this or any highlighting? Yeah, we'll absolutely do, need to do a distress I could get some, some gold and throw it on there. Maybe not quite that way, but no. absolutely some distressing. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of white to my green, um, and I'm just going to kind of hit the, like the tip edges with it so that it's a, it's a slightly brighter green. You could do it kind of in the reverse of that of adding a darker green as well. You do like to have fun with your layers. I do. I, I feel like I feel like stenciling provides so much opportunity for that. Kind of blend your little colors in there. And yeah. We're watching the uh, uh, heirloom. Uh, reclaimed heirloom. Reclaimed heirloom, and and her stenciling of. Just different colors and, and then making it look that old world look. I kind of like that too. I like that too. Her technique is unfortunate in my well, opinion. I was only commenting on the way it looked. Yes, yes, yes. I am a snob about these things. Wants everybody to swirl? Well, no, I didn't. It doesn't bother me whether she swirls or pounces. And incidentally, she does neither. What does she do? She, oh, she's a... She uses a regular brush. But an artist brush. And yeah, she uses a regular artist brush that is overloaded. And and she'll say to, to, to have a dry brush and then all of a sudden she's slapping on a whole lot of wet and it's like, and, it, and then she lifts it up and it's very bled underneath. Yeah. 
So yeah. So now I'm using Dixie Belle's Aubergine, which is like a dark purple. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hit the middle of these lavenders because it's gonna be darker at the center and brighter on the tips, right? Okay. That's the way lavenders work, right? Uh, probably. I'll have to go out and study some flowers. I could be off on that. It could be the other way around because some, some is the other way around. But I, I feel like that's how it is. I feel like it's dark in the dark middle. Dark in the center, and then right, right. its way out. Yeah. Um, some flowers are actually opposite of that and they're brighter on the edges, but I think lavenders are darker in the middle. And so I'm just kind of going in to the middle areas and adding some purple. flowers and everything in here. I'm trying to, I don't know that distressing is going to be enough to highlight these little flowers in here. Um, I mean, I guess you could try wet, or you could try, um, you could try dry brushing. <laughs> are, are you up for that? <laughs> are you all up for that? <laughs> I mean, what's the worst that happens is you give it another coat of paint. It's true. Right? Queen of base coating right here. I mean, that's true. Well, we got to teach you though. You know, you got to learn. You got to learn somehow, and I. And you got to and you got to show them that you know. Anybody can do it. Well, I was gonna say that it's not terrifying. It just seems terrifying. Okay, so now I've gone pretty well in the middle here. Looks a little bit like. Like a, I've airbrushed it or something. Oh, yeah. And so now, and I do have this taped down so it's not gonna move. So now I'm gonna use Lucky Lavender. Lucky, Lucky Lavender. Lucky Lavender. Oh my gosh. Am I getting, getting that? That got easier. I What's expected that? that to be harder. I was getting all prepared to put my brush down. You just you just keep painting there, dear. I'm a paint away. You're painful. Oh, I hate these little peel back things though. Oh, and I don't have a stick. This is very soppy wet. Uh, is there a stick over there? Yeah, can you grab a stick from over there? One tone of pressure. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, this must be the seed you spilled your coffee on last week. Oh, did we miss something? Seat's all covered in coffee. Um, yeah, so anybody who didn't see that, what, I spilled an entire cup of coffee, like, everywhere. It was the what day, happens when she was left alone. It was the day I had to be all by myself. It was like, okay, I got no help. I got no help, I got no time. Do I have to get the very, 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 very bottom of this thing? Yes. Can we just fill it with some lavender? <laughs> I mean, we might fill it with lavender, but yes, you still have to paint the very, very, very bottom of it. I'm looking down there going, that's way down there. Who's going to see it? No, you're going to look at it and see it. No. Okay, so now I'm going to go over my lavender bushes with this Lucky Lavender and brighten up all those areas. And I'm gonna try not to cover too much of that area I just threw the dark in, right? Because the whole point there was to have like a multi-tone effect. Do I need to bring the camera in close to watch you? You could. Let's go do that. You guys wanna see what she's actually doing? I think it would be much more entertaining. Oh, disconnection. All right, can you see? You can almost see. Well, that was actually pretty good right there, right? There? There. You know, I'm going to add just a little bit of the dark purple. Do you want in. the light back on? I don't, I don't care. How does it look? Swirl it in. I don't think they can see. You can see all that, that dark blue. 
same as purple, but sure. Is that a purple, the dark one? Mm -hmm. It's auberheen. It's it looks blue to me. Just, it's a blue purple. Swirl some back in the middle there. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Anybody need a metal rooster? A metal rooster? What? I'm looking at the guy right here in front of you. Oh. <laughs> it's funny that that didn't register in my head at all, given the fact that I yanked it, literally yanked it off this piece of art. For me, part of the fun of this is, is varying the colors, you know, so being able to to kind of have gradient colors in there and it not, even though it's stenciled to not look too, I guess, blocky, like you want it to still have some fluidity. You can see your little flowers shifting side to side. Does that affect anything? Um, It could a little bit, but I'm my brush is really dry, so it shouldn't. And yeah, I might get a little purple on the tips of some of my leaves and things like that, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay, now I'm gonna add just a smidge, and I mean just a smidge, go back to this brush, and I'm gonna add just a hair of white on some of the parts of these. Remember, because I said that they're kind of darker in the middle and brighter on the ends, so I'm just gonna go on and just add just the tiniest bit of white. Does that do like a little highlighting on the on Basically, the flowers? yeah, it's a lot like that. And I'll do that on the leaves as well. And again, these this is like really almost no paint at all on here. My goal is just to have little, almost like little sunbursts of it. You know, where it's just catching a lot of sun and it's kind of a little brighter in those areas. Super, super, super dry. As you can just see, kind of, it's just the most minimal amount of paint. All right, you ready for the reveal here? Set you up. Here, I'll reach this over and you can show them. I still gotta do the lavender down at the bottom, but they can kind of see the, the pretty flowers. Can you see that? It's pretty neat. We're getting close to them flowers. And you can see all the, the layering of color. Looks pretty neat. And now I'm going to put my lavender. I'm going to use the aubergine, the dark purple, over the word lavender here. So I kind of got to go back and and line that up. And the reason I did the white is because sometimes when you do these darker colors, they don't show up when they're really thin lines. So you almost need the white in order to help it show up. Yeah. And I'm just gonna tape off these um, areas that the brush could easily kind of jump into and it'll also help me more easily secure and make sure that my lines don't move since these are super fine. If one was to attempt uh, a beginner dry brush mm -hmm. on this, what color would be a good color? Uh, I think I'd probably use like the, I don't know if we have cotton or fluff right here. I'd probably use that. I've got some fluff. You don't want to put on that, that, that uh, savannah mist? No. No. I'm not going to use the savannah mist. Yeah, that fluff was handy. Okay. And again, I'm working most of it off. And so now I'm just going to go right over what I did with the white. Might I have a blue paper towel when you are ready? You Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what do you remember about dry brushing? Dry brush. Very dry brush. 
So what kind of brush are you going to use? Oh, I need to go get one of those, don't I? There's some right there. Ooh. So I'm gonna use a chip brush. Yes, why would a Klingon not be a good brush for it's dry brushing? Nice. That is not a very good one. That one looks like somebody used it for top coat, so it's crumbly. Mm. Oh, wait, I got one. Little cheapy chip brushes. Yes. A Harbor Freight brush. Yes. So why would why would a Klingon not be an ideal brush? Because it's too nice of a spread. That is one reason. Yes. Too nice of a spread. Yes. Um, it has its fibers are too dense, so it's not going to um, spread out. Splay out. out. Yep. What else? Uh, Does it hold less paint? How are you supposed to store Klingons? In water. In water. What do you not want anywhere near you? Can I have your hurricane gray? My what? Your hurricane gray. Oh uh, yeah, I can share that. So you're saying that a wet brush would be a bad idea for a dry brush technique? Yes, imagine that. Well, that's just odd. All right, so a little bit. Very little bit. And then wipe. Wipe. And then brush. And then, yeah, sort of like flick. What do you mean, like flick? Like flick. So flat this way, and you're basically going to go like that. Yep, just like that. Do I have to actually touch you the piece? You have to actually touch the piece. There you go. Look at that. You're dry brushing. Look at Sue dry brush. Make funny faces while she does it, but by golly, she's doing it. So I'm going to show you where I am on my piece now. So this is where I am, and I'm going to actually add a little bit of line work, especially in my flower pot here, because I want to add some shadows. So I have the Hurricane Gray. I have a, um, this is part of our artist brush set. It's just a nice little round brush. And I'm gonna um, actually kind of again, pull most of the paint off of here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about how like it might have shadows and I'm just gonna very lightly sort of line in. And you should actually have a very damp brush here. Your, your paint should almost be so opposite of mine. almost like ink. Yes, very opposite of yours. You could do this with the stencil on if you wanted, if you wanted to make sure you didn't get outside the lines. I'm not the least bit worried about that, so. Is that from years and years of craft painting? I mean, yes, but also because I don't mind the, I don't mind the line work being a little more obvious. I'm honestly trying trailer. to peek. Ooh, I love I said I was. I said I was over Christmas now. I love lavender. She's ready for spring. I'm ready for spring. We've had like three cold days. I'm ready for spring. No lie, I'm just not a fan of cold. I suppose that's why I live I'm in Florida. loving it. I suppose that's why I live in Florida. I put in my my daily prayer of come on, let's get some snow for Christmas. You know we live in Florida. Weird things happen in this world. Snow can happen. I mean, this year in particular, I would say we live by the motto of weird things can happen. So as long as weird things can happen, I am hopeful. I'm not looking for a whole lot of snow. Just, you know, something that'll go, ee, 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 snowing. You're so silly. Let's see. Char says, hi guys, just woke up from a decadent nap. Oh, That's you're right. lucky ducky. You heard. Naps are completely decadent. Was up super early or out super early this morning. I don't want to be out anywhere in the morning if I do not have to be. But naps, I mean, oh, I love a nap. I got home a little bit early yesterday. And yesterday was a hard day for me and uh, just a lot going on. And, you know, some days, some days you make it just through just fine. But yesterday was an emotionally hard day. Like it just was, 
it was just a day that, you know, like all your energy gets sucked out of you. Kind of one of those days. And my husband's like, you look like you want one of those naps. Sometimes a nap is necessary. Sometimes, Sometimes it just feels just like nice. everything in the world, you know? Alright, there are some spots that I might have gotten a little heavy on. <clears throat> Somehow, some might. Was your brush less? I think I attacked it just a little too aggressively. A little aggressively? Okay. So I'm also going to go, even though I stenciled this white, I'm actually going to take a little bit of white and um, try to add a little more denseness in some areas with that. And I'm also going to go over some of the areas where I threw down the gray, just so that it's not quite as heavy. Um, because I want shadow, but I want it like a layered shadow effect, not a dense shadow effect. In doing this, there's no right answer. It really comes down to what feels good to you, what you like, and, and how you want to do it. I love doing this like with mermaids and seaweed and you know anything. Movement or light. Give it that angle of lighting. Oh, here we go again. You and I used to being in silence. I know. We're really bad at that. I'm studying what I'm doing. You're studying. Concentration. You're... Focus. I'm studying, and then I'm sticking my hand in wet paint because I didn't dry the inside. Oh, it's like you really are doing our role. I'm trying. Because that's what Teresa and I do all the time. So, can you see the shadows in my lavender pot down here in the lot, in the, in the actual flower pot area? What did you do? And now I'm going to add just a little bit of lightness up in my, my, um, my greenery. And I'm just doing this at the very tips and I'll kind of show you here in a second. No, I'm just going to do some, and then I'm going to not do others, and I'm going to let you see what a big difference it makes. Do I need to prepare for a close-up, or you can take it up I'm going to take it up there. I'm just going to do a few, and then I'll take it up there so they can see the difference. Got to give it a half a second to dry, too, so. I mean, I guess I could use the other thing, you know, but... Are we looking so far? Look, I went a little heavier right there. Can you tell? A little heavy. Let's figure that one out. I think I need to dry the inside, though. I'm going to do the inside. I'm going to dry the inside. What is your favorite way of painting? Me? Certainly not me. I just paint. <laughs> Um, well, I don't know. I love so many ways. I, you know, one of the things that Sue and I have been talking about a lot lately is that I really love a lot of the more old world techniques. It's true. I'm so excited to see them coming back in vogue. Um, like watching Reclaimed Heirloom last night, right before I went to bed. She was doing, uh, ragging? Um, yep, she was doing some ragging, and like, I don't know, I just, like, that's so enjoyable to me. Yeah, those old techniques are really, they look easy to do. I'm going to say they look easy to do, because we know I'm paranoid of doing any of these things. But the, the look, the finished product is so neat looking. Yeah, I think so. So now I'm adding some of the deep purple, um, sort of the same technique, but I'm kind of going over some of the white. And what it's doing is it's creating highlights and low lights. 
and it's gonna create a slight more dimension in my lavender. And again, I'm just doing a couple so that you can see the difference and you can tell me what you think. I'm sorry, take it easy on the stove, lady. Okay, so I'm gonna start over here. These I haven't done anything with. I'm gonna turn the light down just a little so I can see. Um, okay, so these I haven't done anything with other than these were the basic where I did a little bit of shading with the brushes when I was stenciling. And now as I come over here, these are ones where I used my brush and I added just um, with some wet paint, just some like little flick marks with the white that I used down here and then um, went back over with the aubergine um, just to kind of add some dimension to it to me. And then of course, this is my lavender down here and you can kind of see the shading that I did there. So tell me what you think. Do you like the... Do you like the little bristle marks or do you like it just solid better? Which one's got bristle marks or solid? So this is oh, the brush okay. and the solid. Okay, good. Like I feel like it adds just a little bit more depth to, to go in with your brushes. Obviously it takes longer this way. You know, I'd already be done. But for me, um, I don't know, I really like that sort of depth. And literally all I'm doing is, because I'm using kind of a round brush, I'm just dragging and flicking. But to me, it makes them feel more rounded, which a lavender is sort of a rounded flower, right? It's skinny and tall and round. Like it's all these little pods basically coming off the center in layers. So normally I would just like do all the white and then do all the aubergine. And that's how I'm going to do. I just wanted to do it, um, those first couple separately so that you could get really a good idea of what they look like side by side rather than me doing the whole thing and then be like, no, which do you prefer? Well, yeah, it is easier seeing side by side. Yeah. Give you that. Lorraine says that she prefers the bristle marks. Thank you. And so does Shari. We like and, to see flowers with depth. And so what I, you know, so then you, you can ask, well, what do you, you know, why do you do the stencils if you could paint the lavenders or whatever? And this is just, it's so fast and it's so easy. And I let the stencils do most of my work and then I can easily go back in and add the depth for the art. Like to me that's that's so much less work. It I, makes it I went a little heavy there. Oh, it's not bad though. Not bad. Okay, good. So would you like me to tell you how you can correct the little bit of heavy? Okay. So you would then go in with dry brush of the hurricane All over right. that area. Well, we've got that open over here. Mm -hmm. Let me just smack your in the in the in the paintbrush. In the paintbrush while I'm doing these quick little whatever flicks. You know. Talking about old world techniques, do you watch The Repair Shop? I love that show. A new season is on now. We were getting ready to watch that this week, too. Yeah. We, we saw the first season, although you don't remember it, do you? I don't remember it at all. I think you guys watched that when I was probably working. I don't know. I swore I watched it with you, but maybe I did watch it with John. Well, John says he remembers watching it. Oh, so. well, then, then it must have been me and John. It, it, that's a fun show. The little, the little guys and little... Big little tinker on the little things on the little shop. You know? I don't remember it at all. I'm going to say, like, I don't love... There's some shows that you and John watch that I don't love that are all about um, restoring antiques. I love restoration. Um, and that's exactly what this show is. It's basically a restoration show. Like, I like upcycling. I like creating new from old. I'm not super fan of of making old look old. You like to make old look old? No. I like to make old look new. I mean, I want it to be. I want it to be. Wait like, a minute! You take new furniture and you make it look old with your paint. You make it look like it's been sitting out in somebody's back porch for the last forty years by the beach. Okay, that's true. I do that. But I don't want to make it, 
I guess, let me rephrase it. I don't want to make it look pristine the way it used to look. You don't want to make it, it look like a brand new product from 1942? Yes. I want it to look like it's, like it's been around since then, but in good shape now. Or like it's taken on a new life. I don't want, I'm a big fan of paint not, not sanding it down and restaining it and, well, and all of that. So. Color matching the stain when you repaired the wooden leg. Yeah, that's Thomas. Thomas, man. I got I can't remember his last name. Thomas is from like New England somewhere. That man can restore some furniture. That's the one I'm thinking of. I think that you and John watch all on the all weekends. All the time. Yeah, you guys watch him on the weekends a lot. And like he's excellent. He, I mean, he goes right down to every little splinter, and he'll. He'll paint it and he'll get it glued into play. And that doggone thing will look brand new like it came from 1930 whatever. Yeah, he 100% does that. And I understand the appeal there. It's just not my... It's not my dig. It's not, it's not like... Not your thing. Not my thing. It's not, yeah, it's not... Not what I enjoy. I like... I would rather see a show on upcycling, taking something, you know, from the 70s and making it, you know, modern farmhouse or something like that, you know. There was that one British show where the 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 people would be at the at the so-called dump site. Yeah, I loved that be, before before it went in the dump. Yeah, they were like see people just getting ready to dump to stuff. Take it off. out of the dump. But if you can stop people as they're going in, they would go in there and they would pick through whatever it is they were getting ready to, to drop off. Mm -hmm. And then the guys would, would, you know, grab all their little things and say, can I have this? Can I have this? And I think they even bought it off of them for like, you know, 10 or $20. And then they'd go and they'd fix it and do whatever they were going to do to it. And then like a week later, they come knocking on their door saying, hey, did you try and throw this away? They did a good job on that one. I like that show. Yeah, so that show I like. Like that's that's different to me. That's that's all about like making it modern, I guess. You know, making it for today. I just don't like we don't live the same way we lived in the in the fifties. We don't have the same needs or tastes. Our homes are not the same. Like I wanna see what can you what can you make today, you know, that's gonna fit today's modern decor out of something old. Now I say that, but there's actually very few painted pieces in my house. Uh, Recent, recently, we've added a few more. I got a couple more. But by and large, I have a, I have a fair amount of antiques in my house. Um, like I, my guest room has a very bright turquoise dresser in it. But then the nightstand is actually another waterfall dresser that is in really good condition. And, That's a nice dresser. And I'm not going to paint it because it's still in really good condition. I like my it. antiques. I like my antiques. My granny taught me to love antiques. I love antiques. Yeah, the side tables in your bedroom, I always want to paint. <sighs> Those come from my friend Marky Mark, his grandmother. So I know that they're very old, very nice, got the leather top on them. They're very pretty. Mm -hmm. I need to do something with them. I, don't just, paint I them. just feel like they're, they feel dated to me. They are a little dated, but I like them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, dated is fine. I like dated. Yeah. Because that, that piece will tell me it's got a history. It knows some stories. And I like... That's why I like rusted out pieces too. Ooh, they got some good stories. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Like I said, I, I get it. People in England are much more into heirlooms than Americans are. That's probably true. Yeah, absolutely. Granny's Antique Shop. Boy, I wish I could have gone to Granny's Antique Shop. Okay, so here's my... My lavender's all done Ooh. up now. What do you think? I like that. It looks a lot more, it has a lot more depth to it. But the good thing is like, I didn't have to figure out the placement of all the lavenders. 
it literally was just like flicking the brush. Um, and it feels, it feels much more art, artsy than, than stencily, I think. True. So now I'm going to take my tape off. My piece is just about done. I'll move the hanger later. So basically for you, stencils are a starting point. Yes. They're not the end all be all. They're the, they're, they're the, the, they're, they're the like beginning. the base coat. And then you go from there. A fast base you coat. them up. I zhuzh them up. Yeah, they're like a fast base coat almost. Um, I, I mean, I love to use them. I just think that they're like an opportunity to make something really cool a little more quickly. Um, and if you were mass, like I could still mass produce this, uh, but each one would be a little bit unique. Oh yeah, definitely. Right? So if I were, if I were going into craft mode, craft fair mode, <laughs> if I were going to a craft, write them all up. Yeah. If I were going to a craft fair, I would have these, I would have a bunch of these and you know, probably boards. I probably wouldn't be recycling nerd. Well, maybe I would be, um, I'd have them all lined up. I'd be doing, you know, all the pots and then all the greenery bump, bump, and then, bump, bump, bump. and then going, doing all the lavender and I, you know, line them up and do four or five of them. But then you'd be having to rinse out your, your stencil every now and then, wouldn't you? I mean, maybe, but so what do you think? Is that, is that great from where it started out with my, my rise and song, chime chicken? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little closer up on my on my little piece here so we can see how I did with my my dry brushing, which you know isn't perfect, but for me good. I think I did all right. You did a good job. This is me learning. Sue it's not bad do. for your first time. There's the inside. Ooh. We'll get better. Now she will need to put a top coat on that. Um, which I have right here. We're not going to do that at this moment. Um, I mean, you can do it, but we're going to go because it's time oh, yeah. for three. Um, but, you know, I think these were fast and easy little projects. I just think this is a super fun one. Uh, I will absolutely use the heck out of this stencil, especially as spring comes. Springtime. I can see this on so many different things. Um, but I love adding the dimension. And I actually will top coat this as well. I just love adding the dimension. Y'all should watch her with her coloring book. Me, I'll just go in there with a crayon and color something in, and she'll go in there and she'll highlight things and add shadows and. Yeah, I, I treat coloring books kind of like art. You do. Like I, they still need highlights and shadows and. I treat it like I'm six years old. I want to just color. Just color. Line, yeah. no line. I don't care. And that's true. But you know, let's see. Uh, well done with the dry brushing. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words with Lorraine and Michelle. Thank you. I didn't know you were there, Michelle. So it's good Michelle. to see you. So uh, I think that's it for today. I we will see you Friday for Fab Furniture Friday. I probably will be doing that in my own house because I had two, three pieces of furniture delivered to my house yesterday that need to get painted. Oh. Um, All right. So... Uh, we will probably do Fab Furniture Friday from my house on one of the pieces in my house that All needs right. to get painted. So, so we'll see what goes on there. We will. All right. See you guys then. Bye, Two o'clock Friday. Bye. Say bye. And then five minutes later, and I five minutes over later, everything. Sue gets over there. Crash.